Hello and welcome back to basically some of the roots of my channel, reviewing small budget laptops, often the cheapest laptop a manufacturer makes. And I started doing that because when I started this channel, I didn't have much money to do it. I still don't have much money to do the channel. And so um, I'm back to reviewing some of these basic laptops. And all right, I'll be honest, this isn't the cheapest laptop that you can buy from Lenovo right now. It is the second cheapest. The cheapest is basically the same laptop, just with less memory, less storage, and a slower CPU. And since I wouldn't spend any money for that version of this laptop, this is the cheapest one I would recommend. Lenovo does have some that are close to this in price, within $5, but they also have worse specs than this, so or are Chromebooks, which I would never recommend uh, to most people. So... Uh, this is the cheapest one available that I would buy. So what exactly is this super cheap laptop from Lenovo? It is a Lenovo 500W. Now, the, the Lenovo brand, as far as like the brand of laptop, so they have ThinkPads and IdeaPads and ThinkBooks, but the Lenovo brand, sub-brand, is aimed squarely at the education market schools and i feel like they do this specifically for the name lenovo to be in front of kids uh, apple did this for years my school had apple 2 gs's growing up and that's very specifically so that kids are get used to the platform and then when they get older and get out of school have their own money they're more likely to reinvest in a brand that they are more familiar with and so lenovo laptops in the school districts and you can also tell that by the price the original msrp for this before they discounted it down to the 225 dollars i paid for it was over 600 dollars now working in the corporate world um, whenever you see a price like that on a business product if you buy it directly from them as an end consumer that is the price you're probably going to pay but for companies when they're buying hundreds if not thousands of these at a time they get massive discounts. And so that $225 is probably far closer to the actual price that most schools and stuff paid for these initially. So that's another thing that kind of gives you, an, gives it away that something like a laptop like this should never cost six over $600. That $225 is the actual price for this system. It is getting close to the end of the school year and I'm sure these are on sale specifically because they probably have a large inventory of them and they're just trying to get rid of them at this point before the next school year and the new model that they will have out have out for the next school year. So what does your $225 of cold hard cash get you? Honestly, a pretty decent machine. Looking at some of the specs, we have a 11.6 inch IPS touchscreen. The resolution is a bit low at 1366 by 768, but with it being such a small screen, it gives you kind of a higher dots per inch that you would get if it was a 14 inch screen or even a 12 and a half inch screen. And being IPS, it has really good, it honestly has really good viewing angles. Um, obviously it's picking up a high reflection from <laughs> the room around me with my studio lights, but to the naked eye, really good. And you don't get quite as much reflection as you see that the camera picks up. The brightness sits at about 250 nits according to Lenovo's website. And so it's plenty bright enough to be in a classroom with a lot of artificial lighting, which is what this is meant to do. It is very reflective being that glass touchscreen, something I'm personally not a big fan of, but for the price point, I can't really complain too much. You can see me talking, waving my hands in the uh, background there. It has eight gigs of soldered non-upgradable RAM. It does have an upgradable SSD. It is a 2242 NVMe SSD. And the reason why I recommend this one over the slightly cheaper one is this one does have eight gigs of RAM versus four gigs in the cheaper one. And it has that uh, SSD that you can upgrade yourself where with the lower one, it has uh, eMMC storage, which is basically an SD card soldered onto the system board. It is extremely slow, they're not very reliable, and I don't know, because I haven't purchased and opened it up, if it has an upgradable S uh, SSD slot. 
So I, to me, it's not worth the risk of getting one and not being able to upgrade the storage. And the four gigs of RAM is personally just not enough for me. One interesting thing about this laptop is the processor. It's an Intel Pentium Silver N6000 CPU with its Intel UHD graphics. We'll go into performance more later down the road, but it is a four core, four thread CPU with a max TDP of six watts. So it is passively cooled. And in my testing, even when I was pushing it, the bottom of the laptop barely got warm. In fact, right now as I'm feeling it, it's actually cold. My room is fairly cool because uh, it's still winter. Um, and there's no heat coming through the keyboard at all. And so you get no, barely any heat on the bottom, no heat on the top. So using this for extended period of time, you don't have to worry about overheating uh, yourself or the system. One nice thing about this laptop being more oriented for uh, the education market, uh, it has fairly good ports. Uh, we have a USB type C here for, that's used for charging. It's also display port 1.2. USB 3.0, full-size HDMI, headphone microphone jack. On this side, we have a Kensington lock, which I don't know if anybody actually uses these anymore. Uh, a micro SD card reader. I would have liked to see full-size, but I will take an SD card reader that is actually accessible. If you look at some laptops like my X280, the SD card reader isn't available on the side. It's actually available along the back hinge of the laptop. So you have to close the screen most of the way, and then it's like part of an SD card reader, not SD, excuse me, a um, SIM card reader. So you have to have like a pin to push it in so the little tray pops out and then you can pull it out and get to your SD card reader. It's ridiculous um, and not usable at all, uh, at least not reasonably. And so it's nice that it actually is a usable slot on this machine. We also have a second USB, full-size USB port, volume rocker and power, uh, pretty common on these 360 laptops that the volume and power is on the side of it. But for me, it makes it a little bit of a throwback because on my old Toshiba X, um, uh, 610 and 620 CTs that I've had, that the volume and power button are on the outside of the machine. So it kind of is a little nostalgic for me. Overall, the feeling of the laptop is plastic. The keys are very plastic, the polish is plastic, the touchpad is plastic, it has this rubber bump around it, the outer case, all plastic. And it's kind of this texturized hard plastic that is actually very durable. And that's really what the name of this game is, is durable. But if we go ahead, let me bring up Notepad and just show you what it sounds like. So the keyboard is very much like any other consumer grade, I'd say, uh, Lenovo. Any idea pad, if you were to pick it up, it would be very familiar to you. Uh, but it is extra loud. And the reason for that, it's kind of hard to see, but on the edge of each key. So you see like on the V on the bottom left, if we turn, you see on the top right of it, there's little tabs there that hold the keys in place. And they're called anti-pry. So they're meant to be more or less susceptible to being pulled out of the machine. Once again, pointing back to its use in a school environment that it is um, meant to take some abuse before being completely destroyed. Trackpad again, feels like there's some pretty beefy micro stitches under there. Should last a long time, hold up to a lot of abuse possibly. Um, on that trackpad. Definitely feels more old school versus more modern trackpads. It's okay. Uh, it just takes a little bit more force than what you would expect on a modern laptop. Now, as far as the color goes, you can see it is not black. It is not gray. It is blue. They call this abyss blue, and I really like it. I think it gives it a nice sharp look without it looking too industrial. Um, you have this bump, rubber bump around it that absorbs some shock and it has this kind of, it's a lighter color with a little speckle in it. I Overall, I think it's a fairly smart looking machine, um, if not overly premium looking because 
again, of its use case. It's meant to go into schools, and it's meant to not just, if this was just gray or just black, it'd feel a bit bleak. Um, I do like the blue. makes it feel, I don't know, a little happier, I guess, to me at least. And it also, you can see, I'm, I'm always really hard on computers when it comes to um, leaving behind fingerprints and palm prints and stuff. And you can see I've been using this for over a week now, and it has left virtually almost no fingerprints compared to what I normally leave behind after just a few days uh, using a machine. One surprise for me was uh, the speakers on this. They are surprisingly good for such a small laptop. They're just two, uh, two watt speakers, uh, but I really had pretty low expectations. Most Lenovo's, like if I think of my like my X270, even my new to me uh, P14s Gen 2 speakers are very meh, not great. Uh, so this, and I'll play some music here for you in a second. Surprisingly good, much better than I expected. Even even able to provide a little bit of bass in songs. Hopefully this is copyright safe music here actually, and I don't have to uh, cut out sound. So again, not great speakers, but definitely better than what you would think on a $200 laptop. One thing I do miss on here is a backlit keyboard. As far as I could tell, there's no way to get one on here. And so it did disappoint me just a little bit not having that. Uh, would have been a nice addition, but then the price would have been a little bit higher. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and unscrewed it so you didn't have to see my fat arms in the uh, video unscrewing it. It is 10 screws. Uh, just a number one Phillips and um, a pick just to get out around the edge. I started at this back edge and then kind of worked my way around this way and it came off. The first time I did it, it's pretty stiff. Um, I've done it a couple times since um, and it's been fine getting off. A couple things you'll note before I take it off fully right here is a plug. Uh, when I say plug, not an actual plug, but like just a whole plug uh, for a stylus. This model did not come with the stylus. I'll show you more about that once we get the cover completely off. And then this hole here, I thought this was a reset hole when I first saw it. But if you know what it is, comment down below and see if your guess is right. And I'll call cover that in just a second. Taking the cover completely off. First of all, captive screws. Though that's another big indication that this is meant for being worked on, being repaired, being serviced. Um, having captive screws means that you don't have to worry about keeping track of the school screws, that they are meant to actually be unscrewed from the laptop, that you don't have to worry about which one goes where, et cetera, et cetera. Um, captive screws is a fairly premium uh, option in my opinion and shows that this is meant to be worked on. Opening this up, starting out over here, we have a daughter board, battery, so that's pretty easily be uh, uh, swapped out. A lot of times with newer systems, these are hidden under the daughter or under the system board. You have to actually remove the system board to get to this to replace it, which is a pain in the butt. Um, pretty decent sized battery, a swappable and removable Wi-Fi card, which is awesome because if I decide to hand this down to one of my kids for use, I can take the Wi-Fi card out of here and not worry about them uh, getting online access. Something I do for my kids. Um, here is our storage is that 2242 sized SSD. I think there might be enough room for it to be a double-sided. I can't really tell. This looks like a single-sided uh, module here, but um, it is upgradable, which is nice because this is only 128 gigs, which is really only 119 usable. And then you lose some more for formatting, etc. cetera. So um, definitely something I might be upgrading here in the future. And here is that hole I was talking about. It is not a reset switch. It is actually a drain hole for the keyboard. So this keyboard, unlike a lot of newer ThinkPads even, has a drain hole for the keyboard. So if it gets a spill, you don't fry your entire system. What a concept. This has started to go away on newer systems. It is back on this one. And I again, just another sign that is meant for a system to be <laughs> used and abused. A couple other things here. Uh, you can see for the USB ports, they are reinforced with metal brackets. 
these hinges are really quite big and sturdy. Uh, this is where the Kensington lock is, and we got three decent sized screws, metal hinge, you know, just, I don't want to say overbuilt, but definitely built um, well. If we look down here, this is that plug I was talking about for uh, the stylus hole as I drop it on the ground. But you can see there's two little contacts here. So the stylus is rechargeable. It even has a retention clip in here for it. So you can take that plug out if you want a stylus and have the hole for the stylus. Now, I don't know what model of stylus goes here. I'll look that up and put it in the video description, a link to one. Um, but that is definitely an interesting thing that they plugged it, but left all the internal components for it. So that'd be a nice addition for somebody who's doing any kind of art or drawing. And that might be something I actually do with this is install some drawing apps. I have a daughter who's very much into art um, and she consumes an incredible amount of paper and art supplies. Um, and so if I could give this to her to be able to draw with um, and give her a stylus to do that with, that would be an amazing addition for me personally. Uh, obviously RAM and CPU are not upgradable. They're actually on the opposite side, uh, which does make it a little bit frustrating to do things like uh, upgrading the, or repasting the CPU. But this runs at such a cool temperature. I don't know if that's gonna be something that you're gonna necessarily need to do for quite a while. Um, so not something I'd, I'd be too worried about uh, on this system. So getting to the meat and potatoes of this review comes down to performance. It doesn't matter how well built a machine is or um, how, the plastics feel on it if the machine is not usable. And I've grabbed my X270, which is really kind of my main uh, machine I use when I'm traveling, um, when I'm just mobile in general. This is my go-to machine. I really like this machine. I've had a couple of these and I don't plan on ever getting rid of it. But what I was surprised of, and when I mentioned that CPU earlier, it really trades blows via both CPU and GPU uh, between the Core i7 7th, 7th Gen in this one and that Pentium 6000 in this one. Uh, depending on when I run it, whatever background system is running, whatever, sometimes this one's ahead by a few points, sometimes this one's ahead by a few points. So really, really close in overall performance. And what that means for this is it's a usable machine you're not punishing yourself by buying this and using it as your daily driver. In the past, when I've reviewed these machines, these super budget sub $250 laptops, the performance of them has been pretty poor. Some of them had spent enough that, yeah, you could get by and, and use it um, if for really basic, simple tasks. But once you've had it, you know, six months or a year, a few updates have happened things like that. And the performance is really not there anymore. But with this one, it's running head to head with a laptop I absolutely still use on a nearly daily basis. And so I would say that this one is definitely there when it comes to performance. Is this machine going to be your new gaming machine? Absolutely not. Um, I tried to run Fall Guys on here, which is a pretty light duty game. And my experience was not great. I was getting between 25, 30 frames per second at best uh, with some drops down into the teens, especially when there were a lot of characters moving around on the screen right where I was at. Um, I haven't installed any other games on here at this time simply for the fact that I doesn't have enough storage. 128 gigs with Windows 11 out of the box. It's consuming like 45 gigs or something like that uh, before you uninstall any of the bloatware or whatever. And you know, so you really only have about 60 gigs or so of available, uh, 65 gigs of available storage to you to start installing some games, which um, both Fortnite and GTA 5 will be are larger than that on the storage. So a lot of the games I'd normally test, I can't right now until I do that. But it is upgradable, so I can test them in the future if you'd like to see that. Uh, but if you just need a daily driver laptop that just does your basic computing tasks and you want it to have a one-year warranty and you want it to be as small and light as possible and have a 
massive battery life. I've gotten nine hours out of this thing using it for basic tasks, turned about down the brightness a little bit. Um, yeah, I've got nine hours out of it. So if you're just looking for a basic computer for a cheap price and you don't necessarily want to go use, it's a pretty good option, honestly. Pretty darn good option. Last year, I took my AliExpress, this little guy here, uh, on a couple of trips. And while I appreciated having this machine, um, this track point and the uh, diminutive keyboard really made it difficult to use it uh, for anything um, serious. Um, it was nice to have a computer, but um, when I was looking up trips to do with my family and locations I need to go, stuff like that, this really wasn't sufficient. And so I'm actually planning on bringing this on my trip. Instead of bringing my X270, which I worry about it getting um, damaged, uh, this one with its rubber bumper and its hard plastics, um, I probably take a little bit more abuse on my trip. And so maybe uh, this will become a new uh, trip laptop for me. Um, I have three or four trips coming up here pretty soon. So um, I can definitely do a follow-up review if you're looking in, if you're interested into a follow-up definitely know, let me know down in the description. Final thoughts, just, yeah, if you need something that this laptop fills, I, I, I wouldn't hesitate to, to recommend it. Portable, sturdy, decent keyboard, if a bit on the loud side, and a price, price is right. Honestly, Lenovo, good job. It reminds me a lot of that uh, IdeaPad 110 I reviewed, what, a decade ago at this point? So kudos, Lenovo. I'm, it's not something I regret spending my money on. And I did buy this one with my own money. So uh, this was not a review unit set to me. I did use my money to, to buy this. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.